This is a video for Toby Johnson for um, his witness videos. Um, my name is Henry May. I'm from Boyle, Mississippi. Um, I've had a long, long interest in Sasquatch uh, going back to 1976 when I first saw the late Andre the Giant as the bionic Bigfoot on the television series The Six Million Dollar Man. Um, and then my father had a book titled Bigfoot the Mysterious Monster. And that really interested and intrigued me. Then, of course, I got to see In Search Of, the episode on Bigfoot. And I uh, got to see, finally, The Mysterious Monsters on television. And um, ever since then, I've been extremely, extremely impressed. And extremely intrigued with the mystery of Sasquatch. Well, <clears throat> that interest has gone beyond just an interest. I've actually witnessed the hairy hominids twice possibly a few more times but I would call those not sure encounters the first time that uh, I ever had a sighting um, it was preceded by several not sure encounters and also by strange sounds such as strange screams and strange whistling noises that I heard late at night um, and then in January 1984, late January, uh, I was outside on our back patio one night. This was January 31st, by the way, a Tuesday. I was outside. All of a sudden, I, I was doing what they call a whistling call or cry. And um, I kept doing this for about two minutes. And then I heard something re respond back to me. Uh, and then about, uh, I guess, a, a few more minutes passed. And all of a sudden, this I saw this thing swaying back and forth behind a, a residence, which was about, oh, I'd say about 50 yards down a hill. I was up on an elevated patio. I guess you could call it a balcony, but it was actually a patio. An elevated patio, and I saw this thing swaying back and forth. All of a sudden, I saw it um, come up under a porch light, and the face, I could see the face. But this was in Georgia, by the way, Woodstock, Georgia. I meant to tell that. Um, was it? We were about, oh, I guess, about 25, 30 miles north of Atlanta. And um, this, this, the, these facial features, I could see this, this very strangely human-like face, no hair on the face, a receding hairline. I mean, it was just, it was losing its hair up here. And um, I watched it for about, oh, two or three minutes. Uh, this thing looked directly at me. I knew it was, I knew that it knew I was there. Um, I was a bit frightened at that point. Uh, because even though I'd read about Sasquatch, and I never read any uh, credible reports of attacks on humans, I was still a bit intimidated. So I went back inside and... Um, I knew that I'd had a very, very life-changing experience. Well, flash forward to almost 14 years later on September, no, not September, I'm sorry, January, again, January. I'm trying to remember what the date was. Oh, it was in the early morning hours of January 13th, 1998. It was an early Tuesday morning. I had just come from my brother-in-law's house, my brother-in-law and my sister, sister's house in Greenville, Mississippi. We would watched uh, WCW Monday Nitro before that. I, that was, of course, the wrestling show, World Championship Wrestling. Um, and, I, and I hung around with them for a little while longer. And then I, came, I, I left their house... I, I, it might have been about 12.15, 12.30 that early morning. And I was heading north on Highway 61. Just kind of, um, you know, trying to stay awake and trying to get home in one piece. and Not really thinking about very much. Just tr thinking about staying on the road and trying to get home safely. Um, I got to a point at about... 10 miles south of Shaw, or excuse me, 10 miles south of Boyle, I was about 3 miles south of Shaw, Mississippi, which is a small little town 
um, in between Great Leland and uh, Boyle, Mississippi. And I saw something about 150 yards ahead of me cross the road from left to right. And this was about 1:15 in the morning, and I couldn't, I couldn't, um, I couldn't imagine anybody being out there at that time of the morning. You know, who would be out there spooking motorists at that time of the morning? Oh, by the way, the uh, the, the individual Sasquatch that I saw in 1984 was a rust brown color. I meant to say that it was it, it was about seven and a half to eight foot tall, probably weighed about um, five to six hundred pounds. Uh, the second sighting occurred in 1998. Uh, I saw this individual walk across the road from right to left, or excuse me, left to right, in a very, very uh, smooth, fluid motion, much like we see in the Patterson-Gimlin film. When I got to the point to where it crossed the road, it stood there by the side of the road in a ditch, um, and it was a. Um, a dirty white color and when I say dirty white I mean perhaps an off-white maybe an albino maybe even a silver color I, I really couldn't determine the exact color of it all I knew was it was a possibly a white or or dirty white or silver color and as I passed it I could see this massive bicep in the right arm because it was standing it was standing side profile like this, well, no, it wouldn't be like that, like this. In other words, imagine this is its right bicep, right here, but it was standing like that. It was, it didn't, never looked at me, never faced me, it just stood there. And um, it, 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 it never really moved anything, or anything like that. And, um, it just stood there as if perhaps to believe that someone would think it was a natural formation, maybe a post or something like that, standing there. Uh, and it stood there and I, and I just, I passed it in the car. I passed right by it. Um, it was, um, it had muscle definition in it that it would make Arnold Schwarzenegger jealous or Triple H. Or um, Randy Orton, perhaps. I mean, this was a very muscular individual. As I, as, I, as I passed it, as I passed it in the car, I could see these massive muscles in its back. And then the muscle definition was much more well defined because of its color. Because of it being a, a silver or dirty white color, it was, it was, it was easy to discern its, its, uh, its, its, muscular, its musculature. And it was a very muscular creature, and it's it it stood about seven and a half, eight foot tall, weighed probably about uh, maybe seven hundred, eight hundred pounds. I mean, it, if it had been a bodybuilder, it would have been extremely massive. Um, it, it was much more massive than than your average bodybuilder, really, to be quite honest. And this thing was just huge, and I can't fathom of somebody having been in a gorilla suit and you know, walking across the road in front of motorists at that time of the morning. Especially, especially, they would have had to have uh, one heck of a suit. That would have had to have been the best suit ever made, and, and whoever made it was wasting their talents, you know, to, to scare motorists in the middle of, in the middle of the night. They should be working in Hollywood, but this was probably the. It was just an amazing sighting. It really was, and since that time, I have not had any sightings, but I have had experiences where I have heard strange vocalizations. I have found uh, tracks. I have found uh, what what appeared to be half tracks, and. Um, Really, and, and and I have had rocks thrown at me a few times in certain in different locations. It has happened, <laughs> um, but yeah, this this was just it's just really I I consider it a privilege to be able to look at one of God's creatures, 
And that's what I would consider the Sasquatch or the Forest Giants. I like to call them the Forest Giants. That's what Robert W. Morgan calls them. I like to call them the Forest Giants or the Forest Giant people. And they are just massive creatures, but they don't use their mass to, to injure anyone. And then that's always an important thing to me. I don't feel it's necessary for them to attempt to injure anyone. I feel like that they are here as a as a separate species from us they may be more human-like um, I suspect that they are of the genus Homo but not Homo sapien I don't think we're dealing with a Gigantopithecus that is my opinion um, because if we were I think we would have had one by now we would have caught a Sasquatch by now or forest giant the fact that we haven't means that um, means that we're not dealing with something that's just a big dumb ape and um, that's pretty much it. And uh, Toby, I hope this is a helpful thing to you. And um, I hope you'll be able to use this video as you see fit. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later.